Now we're going to take a look at something called the, mole the molecular orbital theory and it involves some concept called the bond order. And so for us to be able to determine if a molecule can exist or not, we're going to take a close look at which electrons are available and how those electrons will interact with one another. For example, if we take hydrogen and let's say we have two hydrogen atoms and each hydrogen atom comes with one single electron in the 1s orbital. And so when they come together, they will then form a bond. And the first way in which a bond can be formed by the first two electrons is that it can actually far, form a bonding pair and form a sigma bond, a 1s orbital sigma bond. So the two s orbitals overlap, they form a region, the two electrons can exist in there, and they form a bonding pair. So the bond order is equal to the sum of all the bond electrons. So in this case, with the hydrogen, there are two bond electrons, so you sum them up, so there's two of them, minus the anti-bond electrons, and since we don't have any other electrons yet, that number would be zero. Two minus zero is two divided by two equals one, and it says, the theory says, that if the bond order is one or greater, a molecule like that can exist. And so indeed, you can, ex you can indeed make an H2 molecule since there's only two electrons that will come together, form a sigma bond like that, and the molecule can exist. But now let's take a look at helium, and we'll then get a better look and see what an antibond electron or antibond electron pair is. Well, since each atom now comes with two electrons in the 1s orbital, the two electrons come together, they try to form a bond. The first two electrons will form a sigma bond, a 1s bond, and that's a bonding pair. So we can go ahead and write that, so it forms a bonding pair. But then the next two electrons, they have no place to go in here, so they go into the next locality where they could exist. However, they are, they're, they're not in phase, they're opposed in phase, and so they kind of cancel each other out, they repel each other, and so that second pair of electrons that helium brings to the table, so to speak, is not able to form a stable bond. It forms what we call an anti-bonding pair, which causes, a, which causes a repulsive force. So the first two electrons form a bonding pair, the next two electrons form an anti-bonding pair. So when we take a look at the equation, what is the bond order for helium? Well, we add up all the bond electrons, which there are two. We subtract from that all the anti-bond electrons, which there are two. So this would be equal to two minus two. Divide the whole thing by two, and what do we get? Zero divided by two, which is zero. And the theory says that if the bond order is zero, the molecule does not exist. So in other words, there's no such thing as a helium two molecule. This cannot exist because it cannot form a stable bond between the available electrons. So if the two, elect the two atoms come to the table with a full 1s orbital, there's no way to form a bonding structure that will be stable and hold together. Therefore, we don't see helium-2 kind of molecules. Again, the theory says that the first two molecules fill up what we call a bonding pair in the sigma, the 1s sigma bond, and then the next two electrons, they form what we call an antibonding pair because they will be out of phase and cannot get close together because they will repel each other, and therefore it negates the attractive forces of these two electrons. That's negated by the repulsive forces of those two antibond electrons, and the, and the molecule therefore cannot exist. It's a very unstable situation and very easily gets pulled apart, and there's no way you're going to find in nature a helium-2 molecule. And that's the ground rule of the molecular orbital theory. Now in the next several videos, we'll show you some more complicated potentials for molecules and see how, the, how that bond theory, how that molecular orbital theory holds together and explains to us what molecules could look like and whether or not they can exist or not, depending upon how the electrons interact with the orbitals when you bring them together. So stay tuned if you're interested in more of this kind of thing.